Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here and you love seeing some really awesome animals, we do own over 100 here at DBCB Darts. We also post every week, Monday through Friday. So, before this video ends, maybe head down there and hit that subscribe button for me. Really mean a lot. And well, if you're already subscribed to me, maybe go down there and hit that like button. That'd be really cool too. Let's get into the content. And now by the obvious choice of apparel, I mean, got this bad boy on. This means this is going to be another top five video. This video on why croc skinks don't make the best pets. Yes, you really shouldn't get a croc skink all in all. I really don't think they are for everybody. And in this video, we're going to be showing the top five reasons why I do think that. So let's sit back, relax, dive into some croc skinks and roll the intro. Then diving into our first topic, let's get into it. Number one, crocodile skinks are very skittish. Unlike the classic leopard gecko, crested gecko, things like this, crocodile skinks are definitely not gonna act the same way. Uh, for the most part, these guys are very shy and if they're ever actually out in the open when you end up opening the enclosure up, they're gonna dart for the first hide they can see. Uh, this isn't gonna be enamel, again, like the leopard gecko that's out and about and checking you out. Uh, really, they don't really want anything to do with you. It's definitely a pretty big letdown just because of the fact that, I, I mean, these are like mini dragons and so when you open the enclosure, you really want to see this cool dragon-like reptile. Uh, however, 90% of the time, if you actually do see them out in the open, uh, you're pretty much going to open the setup and then just see some sort of gray flash blur that ducks into the nearest cork flat or hide. But moving on, let's get into topic number two. These guys stress very easily. This is really not a pet that you want to be intrusive of, and by that I mean you don't want to be opening an enclosure, you don't want to be messing around with them, checking them out twice a day, three times a day, really even once a day. Uh, these guys can stress really easily, they really do not like the interaction of being seen or just the before seeing, like in like moving hides, entering the enclosure, things like that. They're, they just don't like it, and unfortunately, um, these guys can actually really stress so much to the point that it really, um, I can't say the word because YouTube will demonetize me, but they, uh, that, that happens if they stress too easily. Then getting into our third topic, let's get into it. Number three, this species is not one to be handled. This is really playing on to topic one or two. Uh, number one, they are skittish, and number two, they stress easily. You put those two together and it really means just don't handle them. Uh, not only can you not handle them, really going into their enclosure is really gonna stress them out too much. Uh, really, uh, just all in all, the crocodile skin really just isn't that great of a pet. It really sucks because of the fact that, you know, crocodile skins, they look incredible. They are an amazing looking animal. However, they're just uh, not that good for captivity, unfortunately. And it's not even to the point like, oh, well, you know, unlike a crested gecko that you can like take out, handle, play with, of course, this isn't that animal. You know, maybe it'll just make a cool display pet. I mean, it looks awesome, so it'll be it'll be great for display. Um, that also is not the case, unfortunately. Again, with the scurrying and the stresses easily, 90% of the time, you're gonna find your croc skink hiding somewhere. So not only is it a pet that you can't take out or really mess with, it's also a pet that you really can't make a display of out of because they're not there to be displayed. I guess my uh, number one advice for crocodile skin keeper, keepers would be uh, just make the enclosure look good because it's really all you're going to be looking at through your time of owning one. Oh, that this isn't enough? Th those things by themselves isn't swaying you to not get a crocodile skink? Y you still want one? We'll keep going then, folks. Let's get into it. Number four, this is a truly sensitive animal. When it comes to reptiles with hardiness, things like, you know, king snakes, bearded dragons, crested geckos, things that really take a lot of the ease out of the husbandry care. They're very um, forgiving if it comes to, you know, messing up the humidity. Uh, maybe the temps aren't 100% there. They're, they're not gonna like, you know, just flip the bed. Is, is that a term people say? Flip the bed on you if you don't have your husbandry good. You know, these animals are pretty forgiving. However, crocodile skinks 
are definitely not one of those animals. When it comes to the Crocs King's husbandry and really their care all in all, you're gonna wanna get it extremely close to how it needs to be. Uh, if you guys need to learn some more about that stuff, I got some videos right here that you can see about their care. If you're already thinking about getting one, even after I, I showed you this video and you're still like, yeah, Dakota, I don't care about this video. I'm still gonna get one. At least, at least watch the care guide and understand their uh, husbandry needs. These guys are a super sensitive species. The, the main thing you really want for them is plenty of hides for them to feel secure. And you need the humidity. You need very high humidity. You need a li nice, large, um, wide water basin that they can soak in, making sure they're retaining how much humidity and moisture that they need. It seems to be the biggest killer of them is just the, the lack of um, humidity. That, that care aspect seems to be the biggest when it comes to crocodile skinks. All right, I guess we're done here. I mean, you're still here? My God, what does it take with you people? You still want a crocodile skin I, I Even after all of that stuff, I'm not stopping you? Well, heck, we, I mean, we still got one more to go through. Maybe this will change your mind. Number five, most often than not, this is gonna be an imported species that you're gonna get, not a captive bred. Now, for the most part, crocodile stinks are still heavily imported. It's really difficult to find a captive bred specimen just for a few facts. Um, number one, not that many people are breeding them. Number two, they really only lay like two to three eggs a year. So really you're only getting about two to three babies every year. Unlike things like crested geckos that can lay anything like 14, you know, retics lay like 60 or something. Yeah, crocodile stinks don't do that. Uh, this is a species, it's actually the one species that I've been breeding that literally gives me the least amount of eggs as possible. I mean, there's no babies coming out of these guys. Yeah, what does that mean? It means your crocodile skink is most likely gonna be wild caught or if you do wanna sort out, source out a crocodile skink, you're gonna be waiting a bunch of years or you're gonna end up with a wild caught adult. Uh, wild caught species just come with a whole magnitude of different problems. Um, anything like parasites, any type of bacterial infections, fungal infections, there is, I'm not gonna list them all. There's a giant list of things that could go wrong with an imported crocodile skin. That means vet visits, that means deworming, but hey, we're talking about they stress super easily and even giving them deworming with an animal that isn't 100% healthy as is could end up perishing them. All in all, Oh man, I, you guys know this video right here, I've had my run in with importer crocodile stings and it either works out super fine, there's no issues, or it is like the worst experience of my life and I spend so much money trying to get them going and then they still fall fall on me. So um, yeah, when it comes to crocodile stings, I don't think importation is for the faint of heart. Really understand how to acclimate wild caught adults or any wild caught species if you're up to the task and um, Maybe get ready for some heartbreak because it does happen. Yeah, not fun. It's uh, it's not fun. Well, there you have it, folks. I gave you my top five reasons why I don't think you should get a croc skink. Are you still gonna get a croc skink? Or, or have I talked some sense into you and you're like, you know what, Dakota? Maybe these guys actually shouldn't, shouldn't be in captivity. Uh, we're gonna hold off for right now. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Is the croc skink the animal for you or are you passing off? Let's hear it. And as always, huge shout out to Zen Habitats. If you're unfamiliar with Zen Habitats, they are the guys that make this enclosure, this radical, incredible enclosure right here. Hey, those things would be pretty nice for croc sinks. Covering that screen top, having that nice little PVC wooden thing to retain that humidity once that top is sealed, sealed in. Sealed? Sealed? They make cool enclosures. Hell, you should probably get one. If you're interested in one, you want to get one, head down there in the description. That's where they are all at. Um, let's talk about other stuff. I actually have everything in my description, including my Facebook, Instagram, the TikToks, the merch, the merch, this merch, that's some cool merch. It's all down there in the description, including Patreon. Patreon.com slash DBCB Exotics. If you want to get behind the scenes of my business, which includes checking out the hundreds of animals that I have, the breeding products I got going on, uh, geckos, choke geckos, New Caledonian stuff, monitor lizards, snakes, ball pythons, there, there's a bunch of stuff. Crocodile stinks, that's another one I'm doing. <laughs> It's some cool stuff. You guys get to see behind the scenes for anyone else. Um, your name also, uh, your name, that actually gets to be on the outro. The one that we're rolling right now. <laughs>